Hi students, in this session, let's learn about analog to digital converters. This presentation gives you an introduction to analog and digital signals, applications of analog to digital conversion, and various types of analog to digital converters. Analog signals. These are continuous signals that are directly measurable. Examples. Thermometer. The level of mercury rises with the temperature. Car speedometer. The needle swings farther right as you accelerate. In stereo, the volume increases as you turn the knob. Digital signals. Digital signals have only two states, 0 and 1, where 0 represents off state and 1 represents on state. For example, light switch. It can be either on or off. Door to a room. It is either open or closed. In real life, we have lot of analog signals that needs to be converted into digital signals. And there comes the necessity of analog to digital conversion. For example, let's take the mobile phone. Here, our voice and analog signal has to be converted into digital signal at the transmitting end. And in the same manner, it has to be converted back to analog signal at the receiving end. What does an analog to digital converter do? It converts analog signals into binary words. The block diagram depicts analog to digital conversion. Here, the input is an analog signal and the output is an equally spaced digital signal. The sample and hole circuit gives a segment of the analog signal that needs to be converted into a digital signal. Analog to digital conversion is a two-step process, namely quantizing and encoding. Quantizing is breaking, breaking down analog value into a set of finite state. Encoding is assigning a digital word or number to each state and matching it to the input signal. Step 1. Quantizing. The number of possible states that the converter can output is n equal to 2 to the power n, where n is the number of bits in the ADC. Let us design a 3-bit A to D converter to convert 10 old signals to a digital voltage. Now, the number of possible states are n equal to 2 power 3 which is 8. The quantization size is given as voltage range divided by capital N where voltage range is the difference between maximum and minimum voltage. In our example Q is equal to Vmax minus Vmin divided by N which is nothing but 10 volts minus 0 volt divided by 8 which gives us 1.25 volts. We have 0 to 10 volt signals. Let us separate them into a set of discrete states with 1.25 increments. As presented in the table, 0 represents 0 to 1.25 volts, 1 represents 1.25 to 2.5 volts, 6 represents 7.5 to 8.75 and 7 represents 8.75 to 10 volts. Step 2. Encoding. Here, we assign digital codes to the output states. Since we are designing a 3-bit A to D converter, we should assign 3-bit codes. Therefore, 0 is encoded as 0, 0, 0, 1 as 0, 0, 1, and 7 as 1, 1, 1. Accuracy of Analog to Digital Conversion there are two ways to improve accuracy of analog to digital conversion. Number one, increasing the resolution improves the accuracy in measuring the amplitude of the analog signal. And number two, increasing the sampling rate increases the maximum frequency that can be measured. Resolution Resolution is the number of discrete values the converter can produce. This is equal to analog quantization size. It is limited by signal to noise ratio which should be around 6 decibels. 
In our previous example, Q equal to 1.25 volt is high resolution. A lower resolution would be 2.5 volts if we use a 2 bit converter. Sampling rate is frequency at which ADC evaluates analog signal. As we see in the second picture, evaluating the signal more often accurately depicts the ADC signal. Hence, we can observe from the images that the overall better accuracy can be obtained by increasing both the sampling rate and the resolution. There are different types of analog to digital converters, namely flash ADC, successive approximation ADC, delta sigma ADC, dual slope integrating ADC. In this session, we shall learn flash ADC and successive approximation ADC. Flash ADC Flash ADC circuit shows that there are 8 comparators, each one comparing the input signal to a unique reference voltage. The output of the comparators are connected to a 8 to 3 line priority encoder which produces a binary output. All the resistors are equal and they form the potential divider for the reference voltage. As the analog input voltage exceeds the reference voltage at each comparator, the comparator outputs will sequentially saturate to a high state. The priority encoder generates a binary number based on the highest order active input ignoring all other active inputs. The analog input and the corresponding digital output here shows a very accurate conversion. Advantages of clash converters are simplest in terms of operational theory and most efficient in terms of speed. Its disadvantages are lower resolution, expensive and for each additional output bit the number of comparators is doubled. That is for 8 bits 256 comparators are needed. We shall now see successive approximation ADC. In this converter, a successive approximation register is added to the circuit. Instead of counting up in binary sequence, this register counts by trying all values of bits starting with the MSP and ending with the LSP. The register monitors the comparator output to see if the binary count is greater or less than the analog signal input and adjusts the bit accordingly. The analog input and the corresponding digital output for a successive approximation ADC is shown here. Advantages of successive approximation type ADCs are capable of high speed and it is reliable. It has medium accuracy as compared to other ADCs. Good trade-off between speed and cost. It is also capable of giving output as the binary number in serial format that is one bit at a time. Its disadvantages are higher resolution, successive approximation ADCs will be slower and it is limited to approximately 5 MSP. Here we can see the comparison of different types of ADCs with respect to resolution, speed and cost. I hope you found this video very useful to understand the process of analog to digital conversion. Thank you.